welcome to the sea lion surveys at Fort Ross State Historic Park. Uh, my name is Sharon Vilnai and I'm the lead of the sea lion survey project with all these wonderful volunteers, some of which who have been part of the project long before I even joined. Personally, I have always had a love of the seals and sea lions, the pinnipeds, and um, getting a chance to just observe them from afar. I feel that connection growing, uh, not only with the people, but with the animals. Coming out to the edge of the world was such an adventure and such a distraction from you know everyday life. I just fell in love with it and the sea lions themselves. By observing them, help with uh, protecting them. Mary Cat saying about the edge of the world, our mentor, Joe Morton's son, he always talked about coming out here to the edge of the world, and that's really what we're doing. Being able to do that, it really helps enrich our lives, and um, being more with the animals makes me feel more human. And um, one of the things about sea lion surveys in particular is that uh, it's quite challenging. When you do a harbor seal survey, the harbor seals are very close to shore, and they're really easy to count and identify much different with our sea lion surveys. They're offshore, they're often hidden partially from view, and so learning how to identify them is a years-long process. So we have some wonderful volunteers who have been doing this for years, and um, because of that, they're very, very valuable to the project. So I'm setting up the data sheets right now for our sea lion survey. We've got three sheets. So we've got uh, accounts form where we put the population numbers, the different species and age groups. And um, we also have a weather brands and tags and comments form. So we make notes about the weather here on the day of the survey. So a day like today obviously is foggy and we'll have to wait sometimes for the fog to clear up. But typically after about 20 minutes or so, once we get into it a little bit further, we'll have an idea if this will blow out. And sometimes, if the fog sticks around, we're just out of luck. If we see any animals that have a brand or a tag, we um, make notes about that and we try to take pictures so that we can send it off to some folks to see uh, if we can track where that animal was branded or tagged. And I don't know if you can hear that, but we can hear some barking in the distance. And the barking is the sound, the vocalizations that the California sea lions make. It's one of the ways you can identify what species of sea lion you're, um, you're observing. This is one of the areas uh, that is uh, known for uh, having both a stellar and California sea lion. California sea lions only go as far north as Vancouver Island. Um, they don't go to north into Alaska. So um, it's fun here where we've got the two species. It's very tricky, I think, to tell them apart, but I'm new and I'm learning and um, it's something that everybody should get out and take a look and um, learn something new. So I'm writing in the date. For every survey you do when you're doing data collection, date, time, very important. I'm going to put the names of all the surveyors present today. We've got a good crew of volunteers. And we also have a human activities and disturbance form. So for our sea lion surveys, disturbance means human caused disturbance. And because the sea lions are so far out, we, the surveyors, aren't going to disturb them. But if a plane goes overhead or a boat goes by and we notice the sea lions reacting, we will make notes of that because people want to know how the sea lions are responding, if they're safe enough out here with the protections that are in place, or if more protections need to be put in to make sure we're not disturbing the animals. It's and amazing. for our sea lion surveys, there are the sea lion rocks offshore, and we split them up into pieces. So the sea lion rocks are considered a um, year-round haul-out, where the sea lions go onto shore during the day to rest, uh, to relax, to warm up in the sun and we have a bunch of different categories of each piece of the rock and so when we do our counts of the sea lions we record counts for each one of these call out names it gets a little bit complicated but as you do this for a while you start to familiarize yourself with all the rock names can you tell us about the difference between the two species because they're really hard for me to tell apart so what do you look for first when you're looking out at those rocks uh, it's a very very good question so there are a few main differences between the physical appearance of both the stellar sea lions and the California sea lions. 
So uh, one thing you want to know is that the um, both species have sexual dimorphism between the sexes, which means that the males and females look different. They have a different shape, and they're also differently sized. The males tend to be uh, three times the size of the females, very different than human beings, right? Uh, girls can be bigger, boys can be bigger, but with the sea lions, the males are always larger. The California sea lions, the males are roughly eight or 900 pounds when they're fully grown, and they have a sagittal crest, this bony bump, protruding at the top of their heads and as they get older that bump gets more pronounced so if you're looking out at the rocks and you see a sea lion with a big bump on the top of its head you'll know the species is california sea lion you'll know that it's a male and you'll know that it's an adult it's a slam dunk id it's wonderful now if you're looking at something um, that has a, a pointed snout kind of dog-like that's also the California sea lion. So we compare California sea lions to dogs. Um, the females don't have the bump on their head and they are a lot smaller. So more like two or 300 pounds. And they often can be confused with young males who haven't had the bump grow very far, which is why in our data, we combine both young, um, uh, immature Californias and females because they're too hard for us to tell apart at this distance. Now the stellar sea lions, the males, the bulls are more like 2,000, they can even be 2,500 pounds. They are enormous and they have really this huge broad neck and a, a mane like a lion and their faces are much blunter. Their snouts are blunt, not fine. And so they look more like bears. The stellar sea lions are genuinely leonine. They have these big manes and they lift up their heads and they roar and they climb up straight up cliffs. So while we compare California sea lions to dogs, we compare stellar sea lions to bears. And those are the two resident species we have out here at Fort Ross year round. And we see their population numbers changing throughout the year, throughout the season, um, but we can always see them out here no matter what time of year we come out. It's really quite a blessing.